Hi, my name is Beatriz and I'm from Laser Robotics. In this video, I'll show three examples of how to build a linear actuator. So what is a linear actuator? A linear actuator is used to convert rotary motion into linear motion. It's quite useful in FLL robot games when you need to lift or push an object. The first and easiest way of making a linear actuator is by using gear rack and putting it in the gear rack housing. This is easy because both the gear rack and the gear rack housing are Lego parts that you can use directly. Also, the gear rack fits right into the gear rack housing, making it a very stable structure. The only challenge with this is that the range of motion is limited by the size of the gear rack housing. So the maximum distance that the gear rack can travel is only eight studs. If you need to push something high or reach for an object far away, you may need a different solution. This second example of a linear actuator can almost double the range of motion. To build it, I used two gear racks and connected them together with a beam on the side. If you look closely at the gear rack, you can see that one end has a stopper that stops the gear. You want to connect the two ends without a stopper together so that we will end up with stoppers on both ends of the combined gear rack. This linear actuator can travel as far as 15 studs. The only problem here is that it doesn't fit into a standard Lego gear rack housing, so you have to build your own. Here's one example of a custom gear rack housing. This is just one example and there are many different ways to build the gear rack housing. Here are two things to keep in mind when you build your custom gear rack housing. First, make sure there's a proper amount of space between the gear and the gear rack. If it is too tight, the gears can wear down quickly and the motor might not be able to motorize it. If it's too loose, the gear can skip, resulting in it not having enough power to lift or push heavy objects. Second, the structure needs to be stable so that the gear does not derail easily. This is a great solution and its range of motion can meet most of the FLL needs. Now what if you want to lift or push more than 15 studs? In this last example, this linear actuator can give you full flexibility. You can achieve any range of motion you want, but obviously it requires a little bit of extra work. In addition to building your own custom gear rack housing, you also need to custom build your gear rack. First, you need gear racks, but the problem is gear racks cannot directly connect to LEGO Techno parts, which are the type of parts mostly needed for FLL. So I will use the LEGO part most of you have seen, a Lego brick with holes. The only difference from a standard brick is that it has holes, which allows it to connect to Lego Technic parts. You can attach a gear rack to the brick with holes and use the holes to connect the Lego Technic parts in your attachments. Now you solve the first problem. The next thing you need to solve is size or height. Bricks and Lego Technic parts have different sizes. Without adjustment, they won't fit each other. But magically, if you attach two plates to one brick, they have the same height as two beams. If you solve the size height problem, you can fit the custom gear rack into the same custom gear rack housing we built in the prior example, or any custom gear rack housing using Lego Technic parts. I would call this the ultimate linear actuator because it can go as high as you want and as far as you want, as long as you have enough parts. We used it this year to connect energy units while the robot followed the line. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments or feedback, please share them with us by leaving a comment down below. Subscribe to our channel and we will make more videos like this.